Hello, I am Dolores Watkins, leader of the announcing team and a member of the women's ministry here at OWBC. On behalf of our senior pastor, Samuel L. Bull Sr., and the One Way family, I welcome you to what's on the agenda and news you can use for Friday, May 19th through Thursday, May 25th, 2023. The May prayer request booklets are available in the church for you. Please take one and petition the Lord on behalf of those requesting prayers, the sick and shut-in, and all bereaved families. Romans 12 and 12 of the NIV reminds us to be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, and faithful in prayer. The church van is available to pick you up to attend the Sunday worship experience. If you need a ride, please contact the church office at 512-238-6922 no later than Thursday noon during the church office hours of 9 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. Tuesday through Thursday for pickup on the following Sunday. On Wednesday, May 24th, Bible study with Pastor Bull begins at 6.30 p.m. The student ministry Bible study will also meet at 6.30 p.m. GPS Bible study begins at 10 a.m. on Thursday, May 25th in the ministry building. The church calendar is updated weekly. Please go to the OWBC website shown here to view the latest updates and coming events. Also, please be sure to view this week's Insightful Health Matters from our His Temple Health Ministry. It's that time of year, summertime, and the heat will soon be on. The 2023 Central Texas Annual Summer Fan Drive began May 1st and runs through September 15th. Pastor Bull would like OWBC to take part in this year's event. Family Elder Care is collecting fans and money to purchase fans for our elderly and vulnerable neighbors who don't have or cannot afford air conditioning. Please bring your fans to the church and we will deliver them to the distribution site. The first delivery is scheduled for Tuesday, June 6th. If you would like to donate money, please use the envelopes marked 2023 Summer Fan Drive Donation located in the foyer. God bless you in advance for your support. One Way Family, on behalf of The Voice, assistance will be needed for the Juneteenth celebration in Old Settlers Park on Friday, June 16th, and Saturday, June 17th. More information and sign-up sheets will be provided in the coming weeks. So please, mark your calendars and prepare to help keep this event a blessing for the entire community. Sunday morning Bible study class is held from 8 a.m. to 8.30 a.m. prior to the one-way worship experience, which begins at 9 a.m. Please join us and stay for the Sunday worship experience. You may join us for the worship experience on our Facebook and YouTube pages, but it is a blessing to everyone when you join us in person for the full worship experience. The church is located at 2107 Harry Mann Road in Round Rock. We look forward to worshiping with each of you this Sunday. thought for the week. When you're in the midst of a storm, it's hard to remember that God is always good and glorious and that His plans will always prevail even when yours do not.
blessed week. And from the desk of Pastor Bull, don't let the devil steal your joy.
Would you all please silence your phones? Please close your eyes and bow your heads in a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for being our Lord and Savior. Thank you for waking us up this morning, Lord Jesus. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for getting this church. Thank you for getting this church this morning, Savior. Lord Jesus, thank you for keeping us and guiding us. Thank you for being our Lord and Savior and somebody we can depend on, Lord Jesus. Heavenly Father, thank you for blessing all the students here, the blessed, the sick, and shut in, the people watching online, Lord Jesus. Dear Heavenly Father, bless the students for that they start the new chapter of their lives, new schools, new classes, new careers, Lord Jesus. We pray that you guide and protect them every step of the way, Lord Jesus. We pray a special prayer for the sick and shut in, those unable to end, un, those unable to attend church for any reason, Lord Jesus. Heavenly Father, touch Pastor Bull. Allow him to step aside so he can speak the message through his word for your word, Lord Jesus. Bless our one-way family, Lord Jesus, and our visiting friends. Thank you for all that you've done for us, all that you do in the past, present, and our futures, Lord Jesus. In your name I pray and ask. Amen. Today, I'll be reading from the New International Version, Isaiah 41.10, and it reads, So do not fear, I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with, with my righteous right hand. May the Lord bless the hearers, readers, and doers of his holy word. You may be seated. to be celebrated. So here at One Way this morning on behalf of Pastor Bull and our entire One Way family, the student ministry, we want to take time to honor our graduates from here at One Way. Is that all right with you this morning? Yeah. Amen. And we are so proud of all of our graduates. They have done well this school year and they have plans to do even more as the time comes. So as I call your name, our graduates, would you please come forward and accept your gift and presentation on behalf of One Way. Amen. All right, we're going to start with our high school graduates. We have Brother Sir Anthony Moore. Brother Anthony Moore, Sir Anthony Moore. He is a high school graduate of Stony Point High School. He plans to attend ACC and Stutter Study Business. all of them. Amen. Celebrate our, celebrate our graduates. Next we have our high school graduate Xavier Zay Cox. He's, he's graduating from Cedar Ridge High School. Zay plans to attend Southwestern Oklahoma State University. All right, so he's going away, but he plans to study sports management. Amen. Our next high school graduate, and I'm not going to cry. <laughs> Woo, okay. It's Jayla Demery. <laughs> She's graduating from Cedar Ridge High School, and she plans to go and attend Mount Mercy University in Iowa, and she wants to study law.
our next high school graduate is Braylon James. <laughs> Braylon is a graduate of Stony Point High School, and we know he is marching on the fields at Notre Dame. <laughs> he plans to stay right here, baby. He plans to uh, study at the School of Business there. high school graduates for this 2023 school year. But here at One Way, it doesn't stop there. We have college graduates as well. Slide on down my high school. <laughs> Our first college graduate with getting his master's degree is Jalen Crenshaw with a master's in marketing from the University of Texas at Dallas. He plans to have a career in marketing research. how much more the Crenshaw family is blessed. Our next college graduate with another master's degree is Trayvon Crenshaw with a master's of psychology from Texas State University. Trayvon plans to have a career in psychology. Our next college graduate is Sister Kiana Jones, Kiki. <laughs> she graduated with a, with a degree for a BEA studio art major and art history minor with teaching certificate from Sam Houston State University. Our own Kiki will be the art educator at Ridgeview Middle School in Round Rock. And just to be an inspiration to each and every one of us, that age is nothing but a number. When it comes to education, it's never too late. Graduating with a degree in nursing, our very own Kedra Mary. stand our 2023 graduates from the One Way Baptist Church family. May you be encouraged. May you be encouraged, each and every one of you, to stand firm on God's word as he leads you and takes you to higher heights. Amen. up today.
on, y'all. Listen. I got Jesus. 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 Anybody got Jesus? Anybody got Jesus? I say you got Jesus. I say if you got Jesus. If you got Jesus, you got a mighty good doctor. If you got Jesus, you got a mighty good friend. If you got Jesus, you got a lawyer in the courtroom. Can I ask you all a question? Can I ask you all a question? Anybody got Jesus? Anybody got Jesus? Anybody got Jesus? Come on, Richard. Anybody got Jesus? Well, I got Jesus. Well, I got Jesus. Anybody got Jesus? Anybody got Jesus? If you got Jesus, you got a mighty good friend. If you got Jesus, you got a mighty good lawyer. Anybody got Jesus? If you got Jesus, you ought to wave your hand. If you got Jesus, wave your hand. Have you ever been sick? Well, I got Jesus. If you ever been sick, he's a mighty good Lord. He's a mighty good doctor. You ever been in trouble? Have you ever been in trouble? He's a mighty good lawyer. I got Jesus. I got Jesus. I got Jesus. I bet I got Jesus. If you got Jesus, clap for your hand. If you got Jesus, you ought to clap your hand. If you got Jesus, you ought to clap your hand. Say to the graduates, you got to get Jesus. I want to say to the graduates, you got to get Jesus. Stay with Jesus. If you stay with Jesus, he's a company keeper. I got Jesus. When you get lonely, he'll be a company keeper. Well, I got Jesus. We're glad I got Jesus. Glad I got Jesus. Glad I got Jesus. Glad I got Jesus in my heart. Hey, hey, hey! Can I ask you a question? Anybody here got Jesus? Lean on and tell somebody.
about that name of Jesus, y'all. That's that word again. It's, it's the sweetest thing that you ever know. That's good. Here we go, here we go. Shoot it in. Love the name of Jesus. 
We just thank you, praise you, and bless you for such a time as this. Thank you, dear God, for your spirit moving in this place. God, we just praise you. It's another day's journey, and we're glad about it, dear God. Thank you for waking us up. Thank you, dear God, for allowing us to see this day that we haven't seen and one we will never see again. Thank you, dear God, for these, this mighty men's ministry ministering to us in song. Now God, I pray for your word this morning. Let your word go forth. I pray to God that you have prayer warriors out there praying that your word will go forth. Touch the hearts, minds, and ears of your people to receive your word. Let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Oh, Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Hide me behind the cross, dear God. So much so, dear God, that they see or hear none of me, but all of thee, dear God. Let your word go forth. Holy Spirit, have your way in this place. Don't let us leave here the same way we came. In Jesus' name we pray. And all the people of God said, Amen. Amen. Everyone stand to your feet. Find you somebody. Look at them and tell your neighbor, you sure look pretty today. You look handsome. Amen. Say something nice to your neighbor. Amen. 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 Open your Bibles this morning. Open your Bibles this morning to the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 21. 
verses 21 and 22. If you don't have your Bibles, get it on your phone. It's not a smartphone if you don't have a Bible app. That's what makes your phone smart. Amen. Matthew chapter 21, verse 21 and 22. So sure it's good to see everyone here today. Good to see you with your smiling faces. Some of y'all know that song that they used to sing, Smiling Faces, Young. We, we praise God for you this morning. While you're finding it, let me just express my appreciation for our ministers. We all were in the uh, uh, choir stand today. Dr. Inchell in his absence, Grantham in his absence, Elder Belchel and Richardson and their wives out of here. Thank you so much for serving in ministry with us. Our deacons and their wives, everybody's on the front row, but just let's stand around and just give y'all a salute. They all up there in the choir stand, amen. Servant leader and his wife, our deaconess, deaconesses, our, our uh, ministers and deacons' wives, our ministry leaders that are here this morning, GPS, our student ministry, our graduates, Usher Ministry, a Mighty Music Ministry, Minister of Music, Pastor Rory, Brother Oliver, our VSL, safety that's in the parking lot, amen. Our greeters and you, our Facebook and YouTube family, you my family, my uh, father's children and visitors alike. The Gospel of Matthew chapter 21, commence reading at verse number 21, include at verse number 22 when you have it these words are recorded and when the disciples saw it they marveled saying how soon is the fig tree withered away Jesus answered and said unto them verily I say unto you if ye have faith and don't doubt you shall not only do this which is done to the fig tree, but also if you shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea, it shall be done. Amen. Thank you so much. You may be seated in the presence of God. The grass withereth and flower faded thereof, but the word of our God shall stand forever. I want to preach this morning with your prayers and needing God's power from these words. Faith to move stuff out the way. Amen. Faith to move stuff out the way. Amen. Faith to move stuff out of the way. Thank you so much, ushers. Thank you so much, ushers. One of the joys I have in reading and studying the Word of God is when you do, you discover that it by and large can help you deal with some of the uncertainties in life. This is not to suggest that just by reading the word that all of the uncertainties in life are just going to automatically disappear. But it is to suggest that when we read the word, we discover that it's complete with illustrative examples of persons and sometimes circumstances that are, that are there to help us deal with these various uncertainties of life. For instance, when we look at the Bible and we study certain images and profiles of persons in the Bible, we discover that there are some things in life we have to live with. Most of us are familiar with the Apostle Paul. When you read 2 Corinthians chapter number 12, we read of the account that Paul was praying to God and on three different occasions, the Apostle Paul pleaded with the Lord to remove this thorn out of his flesh. In fact, in verse number seven, Paul said it was given to him a thorn in the flesh a messenger of Satan to buffet him. And he said three times 
I went to the Lord and asked him to move this thing out of my way. And Paul teaches us that there are times even after we pray to God and pray fervently, pray persistently, and passionately that there are still times when we have to live with some thorns. And I'm talking to someone this morning and you ought to say, I know that's right. Because there are some things that you've prayed about and God has just refused to move. God says, I'm not going to, I'm not going, uh, to relieve your grief, but I will release my grace. Because my grace is greater than your grief. However, the good news is even though there are some things in life we have to live with, what gives me encouragement is that we don't have to live with everything. Somebody ought to help me here. And, and, and that's, that's the truism that our text this morning is teaching us. And, and, and brothers and sisters, and, and that is God has given us the power to literally move things out of our way. Touch your neighbor and tell him you don't have to live with everything. That's shouting news, that's shouting news, that's shouting news to know that you don't have to just take everything the devil gives you. It's shouting news to me uh, that, that you don't have to just sit back and live with depression or live with burdens or live with trials. I'll keep going till I get to your street. Uh, live with heartaches, live with heartbreaks, and live crying tears at night. The good news is that we literally have the power to move some stuff out of the way. Now, I love this particular text because Matthew chapter 21 captures the most uncharacteristic miracle ever performed by Jesus Christ. This miracle is the most uncharacteristic miracle of Jesus. And I say that because it's the only miracle that Jesus ever performed that did not result in a manifestation of mercy. Let me say that slow. This is the only miracle ever performed by Jesus Christ that the end result was something that was being cursed. When you look at our text this morning, uh, uh, Elder Richardson uh, uh, started teaching that in the Sunday Bible study, and I got up and heard him and ran out of church. I said, because he's all on my street this morning. When you look at our text this morning, Jesus cursed the fig tree. I want you to catch this. Jesus cursed the fig tree. And the reason why he cursed the fig tree is found in verse 19. You still have your Bibles open on your app? He cursed the fig tree because the tree was in the way. Let me say it one more time. He cursed the tree because the tree was in the way. Verse 19. The Bible says that Jesus looks up and he sees a fig tree in the way. That's what the Bible literally says. That Jesus saw a fig tree in the way. Now, if you have a translation, meaning the NIV or the King James or New King James, another translation, it says in the road or by the road or along the roadside. But the Bible really wants us to know that this tree, even though it was by the road, it was still in the way. <laughs> and it was in the way for three reasons. Found in verse 19. The tree was in the way, number one, because it was slowing down progress. The tree was in the way, secondly, because it was serving no purpose. And thirdly, the tree was in the way because it was sitting there pretending. All right? It, 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 it's in the way because it slowed down progress. Jesus, according to verse 19, he's on the way to Jerusalem for the temple. 
And the Bible says instead of going straight to the temple, he stopped by the tree. And every moment he spends at the tree is a moment that's keeping him away from his final destination, which is the temple. Which is to suggest, brothers and sisters, that this tree has slowed him down. This tree, number one, has slowed down the process. But then secondly, this tree is serving no purpose. Because verse 19 says, you still have your Bibles open, right? That when he gets to the tree, that he found nothing on the tree. <laughs> the, the, the signature purpose of the tree is to produce figs. That, that's the only purpose for the tree and that's all the tree had to do was to produce figs I, I pray y'all getting this uh, 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 uh. If, if, if he found nothing on the tree it means my brothers and sisters that the tree was not fulfilling its purpose the tree is in the way number one because it slowed down progress uh, it's in the way because it's serving no purpose. But then thirdly, it's in the way because it's sitting there pretending. Look at verse 19. Right there in verse 19. Verse 19 said that the tree had leaves only. And, and for those of you that did not know, a fig tree is rare in the sense that you see figs before you see foliage. The mere fact that, that there were leaves and no figs suggests that the tree was pretending to be something that it was not. I wish I had some help in here. It was a hypocritical tree. Because Jesus sees this tree just in the way. The Bible said he curses the tree. Now let me put a quarter in this meeting pocket just for one moment. And tell somebody, we owe God some praise this morning for not cursing us. Those times we were just in the way. I, I see some of y'all looking like you're looking. Please don't look like you've always been in church. Please don't look like you've always been holy. Please don't look like you've always dotted every I and crossed every T. All of us. Touch a neighbor and say, you too. All of us have had some times when we were just in the way. We weren't serving any purpose. We were, we, we were stopping progress. We were sitting there pretending to be something that we weren't. But thank God for the grace and mercy of God that could have done for us what it did for the tree. But instead, he canceled our reservation to the cemetery. Oh, let us come to church this morning. And you have the nerve to walk in here and not praise God? Let us come to church this morning. You have the nerve to walk in here, brothers and sisters, and sit in here waiting on someone to pump you up? The devil is a lie. I praise God because God could have cursed me a long time ago. I'm going somewhere with this. He, he. He curses the tree. And after he curses the tree, the disciples in verse 20, I'm right in the text, start tripping. They are astonished. Let me use the word the text use. They are marveled. Because what, 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 what was in the way got out of the way quickly. They're surprised because the tree was there one moment and gone the next moment. The tree was in the way one minute and out of the way the next. The next minute, they, 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 so they start tripping because they can't figure out how did the Lord get this tree out of the way so quickly. And what makes me shout, brothers and sisters, about this sex, Jesus turns to them in verse 21 and he wants them to know that the same power I had to move stuff out the way, you have access to that same power. 
And that's exactly what I want to preach about today. Because there is someone under the sound of my voice and you have some stuff that's in the way. That's stopping your progress. That's slowing you down. You have some stuff in your life that's serving no purpose. And my assignment today is to tell you that you don't have to live with that issue. God told me to tell you that you have moving might in your mouth. If you start talking to some stuff, some stuff has to move. I wish I had some help up in here. God told me to tell someone here that if you had enough faith, you don't have to live every day robbing Peter to pay Paul. You don't have to live every day, I feel like preaching here now, climbing up the rough side of the mountain. You don't have to live every day crying, but you have the power to move some stuff. Come on, look at your neighbor and tell them stuff is getting ready to move. Stuff is getting ready to move. Now, 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 in order, my brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, for stuff to move, you have to have faith. You have to have faith. Listen, listen, listen. Faith is the force that's going to cause things to move out of your way. Let me say that slow. Faith is the force that's going to cause stuff to move out of your way. Let me say it one more time for the Holy Spirit. Faith is the force that's going to cause things and stuff to move out of your way. But the question that must be asked and answered is, Pastor Bull, what kind of faith? So I want to unpack this text right quickly because there are some teachable truisms tucked away in this text that I want to transport to your temple. The text is about three things. Exist, expects, and expands. Write that down, write that down. The text is about exists, expects, and expands. First of all, you have to have the kind of faith that exists without doubting the matter. You, you have to have the kind of faith that exists without doubting the matter. Let me see. Let me see how I can say this. Faith and doubt cannot operate at the same time. You cannot have faith and doubt. Doubt is the enemy to faith. The Greek word for doubt means this. It means to separate thoroughly. It means to pull apart. That's what the word doubt means, to, to separate thoroughly. The, the word doubt means to pull apart. The devil wants to thoroughly separate you from your faith. The devil wants to divide you, part you from your faith. The devil knows that anything that's divided cannot be dominant. The devil knows that a house that's divided cannot stand. A kingdom that's divided cannot stand. A faith that's divided can't bust a grape. Anything that's divided cannot be dominant. Then because, brothers and sisters, the devil wants uh, to cause a doubt in your life, he will allow you to deal with distractions. He will allow you to deal with disappointments. He, he'll throw disasters. Uh, he'll throw derision. He'll throw danger. He'll throw death. He'll throw dysfunction in your face trying to get you to doubt God. But I'm talking to somebody on the sound of my voice that can tell the Lord, Lord, 
I know too much about you to start doubting you right now. Is there anybody here this morning that can tell the Lord, Lord, I'm not going to doubt you. I trust you. You cannot have faith and doubt at the same time. The kind of faith you got to have is the kind of faith that exists without doubting the matter. Whatever the matter is, believe in God for it to come to fruition. Whatever the matter is, brothers and sisters, the matter may be financial. You believe in God for a financial situation. Well, glory to God. Believe that all the silver and the gold belongs to God. And God can manifest the money. Somebody here, the matter, the matter may be your housing situation. You got to believe that God owns the earth. And the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. Somebody else, your matter may be stress. But you got to believe that God can ease the burden of your life. Whatever the matter is, my brothers and sisters, believe God without doubting. Look at your neighbor and tell me, you can't doubt, you can't doubt, you can't doubt. Brothers and sisters, the, brothers and sisters, the point I'm trying to make to you this morning. Is, is, is I'm trying to make it is, is, is to believe God and having faith that exists without doubting. And this is what the Lord is saying is that you must keep believing. Keep believing. Keep believing. Keep regardless of what your eyes may see. Believe regardless of what your ears may hear. Okay. Believe regardless of what your heart may feel. You, you got to keep on believing. Somebody shout, keep on believing. Oh, in fact, brothers and sisters, that's what God told Jairus in Mark chapter 5, verse 36. Some of y'all may be familiar with this story. It's a story about a young man. His name was Jairus. And Jairus had a daughter that was sick. Do I have a Bible reader? The Bible says that Jairus left his home and went to find Jesus. And when he found Jesus, the Bible says, he convinced the Lord to come back to his house. There, and as they are traveling back to Jairus' house, Jesus stops and deals with a woman who had her own issue. And then making his way to Jairus' house, the Bible says that word came from his house saying that the daughter oh, has already died. That while the deliverer was delaying, your daughter has died. Jesus turned to the ruler of the synagogue and he, and he opens his mouth and tells Jairus, I know what you heard. I know how it looks. But only believe. I wish I had some help in here. In other words, keep on believing. You believe, he told Jairus, you believe me enough to come find me. You believe me enough to wait with me. You believe me enough to walk back to your house. Don't stop believing now. Let me talk to somebody here this morning. Your faith is starting to grow. Well, guess what? Press the rewind button of your mind. If God was with you last year, he'll be with you this year. If God was, uh, was with you, he healed you last time, he'll heal you this time. If God dried your tears last month, he'll dry your tears this month. If God paid your bills last time, he'll pay your bills this time. Why? Because the same God back then, same God now. You, you, you have to trust God and don't doubt. What, 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 what will make you doubt God? I've seen God do too many things for me. Can I just testify? 
I've seen God open too many doors. I, I've seen God level too many mountains. I, I've seen God have my back too many times. I, I've seen God fight too many battles. I've seen God secure too many victories. I've seen God wipe too many of my tears. I've seen God come through too many times. I can't doubt God now. now. I don't know who I'm talking to this morning, but somebody has some stuff in your life that has to move. God says if it's going to move, you got to have faith that exists without doubting the matter. Can't doubt God. Can't doubt God. I have too much equity in my relationship with God. I can't doubt God. I have too much history to doubt God. And because I have too much history in my past, there's no mystery in my future. Because he's the same God. Have I got a witness here? So if there are some things in my life that has to move, I have to have faith. But number one, this, it has to be the kind of faith, brothers and sisters, that exists without doubting the matter but then secondly it has to be the kind of faith watch this that expects God to do even more it has to be the kind of faith that expects God to do even more look up here 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 verse 20 right there in the text the disciples, they are marveling in verse 20 because Jesus calls this fig tree to dry up. Is that in your Bible? And, and Elder Richard, they, they, they're surprised. They are astonished. But, but Jesus says to them, verse 21, in the message Bible says it like this here, don't be astonished by that. If you embrace this kingdom life and don't doubt God you not only do minor feats like I did to this fig tree but you'll triumph over huge obstacles like this mountain for instance you'll be able to tell this mountain to jump in the water and the mountain will be removed Jesus says you are impressed over something that's minor but if you have faith to believe me for something bigger you can look this mountain in the face and tell this mountain, get out of my way. The disciples are excited about Jesus doing something minor, but he's talking to them about doing something mountainous. And that's somebody here under the sound of my voice. God told me to tell you, you have to expect God to do more. Because as God, as good as God has been to you in your past, excuse my English, you ain't seen nothing yet. God had more in store. Now I understand some of y'all are complacent. You are satisfied with where you are already are. And where you, where, where, you're satisfied with your career. You're satisfied with your past. You're, you're satisfied with your journey. But I'm talking to somebody else who's like Jabez, who says, Lord, bless me indeed. Enlarge my territory. Huh? I want to know this morning where are my more folks? Am I talking to anybody in the building that, that can declare, God, I believe in you for something more. You've been good in the past, uh, but I'm believing that you, can do, that you can be better than that. You blessed me in the past, but I believe you can bless me even the more. Do I have any more folks in the house? Let me, let me see if I can help you. Let, let, let me see if I can help you right quick. I've discovered one way 
that we have not seen the best yet. I'm going to take off running here in a minute. God has something better. God has something that can leave you speechless. God has something according to 1 Corinthians chapter, chapter 2 and verse number 9 that I hasn't seen or ear have heard or enter into the heart of men. God can bless you according to Ephesians chapter 2 and verse number 20. Exceeding abundantly above all you can ask or think. You haven't seen the best yet. And let me, let me prove it to you, and I'm going to get on across the field here. Some of y'all look like you're real hungry. In the book of Isaiah, go, 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 go right quick, go right quick. Go to the book of Isaiah, chapter 43. Start at verse number, let's say, 17. Go right quick, get it in the app right quick. Follow me right along. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 43, start at verse number 17. <sighs> when you look at it, the Bible says, Isaiah chapter 43, verse 17. The Bible says, when you look at it, the Bible says, I'm the God which bringeth forth chariot and horse, the army and the power, that in your Bible, they shall lie down together, they shall not rise, they are extinct, they are quenched as tow. Watch this. In that verse, brothers and sisters, God is talking to his children about what happened to Pharaoh's army at the Red Sea. Now, how many, how many folk in here remember the Red Sea incident? For those of you that may not know, let me explain. God sent Moses to deliver the children of Israel out of Egypt. And when the children of Israel were leaving Egypt, the Bible says, and Moses got to the Red Sea. And at the Red Sea, it looked like he was fenced in. I wish I had a Bible reader. He had the Red Sea in front of him. He had mountains on both sides of him and Pharaoh's army coming up behind. Can I put a bull spin on it? He has the uncrossable before him, the unclimbable beside him, and the uncomfortable behind him. He's standing there, my brothers and sisters, at the Red Sea. And he stretches out his rod. And the Bible says the water plays leapfrog over each other. And as Israel came through on dry land. Is that in your Bible? But when Pharaoh's army tried to go through, they drowned. Now that's a place right there for somebody to give God some praise. Why? Because what that teaches us is God can let you go through some stuff that everybody else can't go through. can take you through some things and you can come out fine and they'll come out addicted to drugs uh, God can let you go through some stuff and you'll come out with your joy and they'll come out bitter God can let you go through some things and you'll come out look, not looking like what you've been through and somebody else will come out looking like a crackhead God can let you go through some things and you'll still have your swag You'll still be smiling, styling, and profiling. You'll still have your praise. You'll still be getting your hair done, getting your nails done. You'll be feeling good, driving good, looking good, eating good. And somebody else can go through it and come out looking like a mess. That ain't even my point. Let me get back to my message. But look what the text said right there in Isaiah. But when Pharaoh's army drowned in the Red Sea, that was the greatest miracle that the children of Israel had ever seen. That miracle was the top. That miracle was the best miracle that Israel had ever seen, how God drowned Pharaoh's army in the Red Sea. But look at verse 18 of Isaiah 43. As awesome as that was in verse 17. 
Verse 18 said, the Lord says, forget about that stuff. Stop talking about that stuff. Verse 19, because I have some new stuff. Church folk don't know when to shout. I'm getting ready to do in your life. Somebody, somebody ought to help me preach here. God told me to tell somebody today, as good as God has been to you in your past, forget that stuff. Because the best is not behind you, but the best is before you. I need about 73 people in here this morning that can jump on your feet and give God some praise, knowing that God has something better. Somebody's going through a divorce. God has something better. Somebody's going through a job change. God has got something better. Someone is going through a house as Christ. God has got something better. Someone is going through a heartbreak. God has something better. Someone is going through money issues. God has something better. Someone is going through a medical situation. God has something better. If you go... You're going to have to stuff moved out of your way, moved out your life. You have to have the kind of faith, brothers and sisters, that they expect God to do even more. I need you to look at, look at your neighbor with an attitude and tell him, I'm expecting God to do even more. Is that the best attitude you got? Is that the baddest attitude? Is that the baddest attitude you have? Come on, tell them with a serious attitude. I'm expecting God to do even more. That's what. <laughs> but say that's why I praise him like I do. Because I'm expecting God to do even more. Somebody in here can't catch a ride to church, but you can expect God to do even more. Somebody in here, your job is giving you, giving you all the hell they can and charging your tax. But you expect God to do even more. You're living in a place that you, you really don't want to live in. But expect God to do even more. Y'all all right? Let me, let me hurry up and let y'all go get some salmon. Let y'all go get some shrimp. If you get some chicken, make sure it's air fried. Jesus says to these disciples, you have faith to move stuff out the way. But it has to be a certain kind of faith. It has to be the kind of faith, number one, that exists without doubting the matter. You cannot have faith and doubt at the same time. Brothers and sisters, if you believe in God for rain, walk around with an umbrella. You believe in God, we feed you, set the table. That's faith, that's faith, that's faith. That's faith. You, 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 not, not what you see, but believe in God. Hmm. Secondly, it has to be the kind of faith that's expecting God to do even more. But finally, you have to have the kind of faith that expands and develops into maturity. Go back to our text. Brothers and sisters, one day, I promise you that you will be tested on what I'm preaching today. And you have to have the kind of faith that expands when it's developed into maturity. You cannot have the kind of faith that you've always had. You have to have the kind of faith that's ever evolving. That's constantly growing. And what I've discovered is that one of the problems that proliferate 
the people of God and plague the church is that there are people that do not want to grow. I don't care if y'all don't say amen. I ain't scared of none of y'all. We have folk that do not want to grow. I'm not saying here. <laughs> I just said folks. They want to stay on the same level. But I want to let you know, you cannot drink the milk of the word always. You have to get off the bottle. Come on, help me here, somebody. You have to start eating the meat of the word. You have to have a desire to grow. Every parent in the building, raise your hand. Every parent in the building, raise your hand. You're a parent. All right, all right, all right, all right. If you had a child that wasn't growing, you seek out the best pediatrician in the world. Amen? Because what you do as a parent, watch this, you measure health by growth. Okay? I wish I had some real folks in here. You're not an internalist. You don't know what's going on on the inside of your child. But what you do is you track their growth. If they're growing, if they're developing, if their comprehension skills are sharpening, if they're growing in statue, if they're, if they're reading better, those are marks of maturity or signs of growth. Can I get just one, one or two more witnesses? Parents at least say amen or just wink at me. They're, 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 those are some of the signs of growth. Well, my brothers and sisters, it ought to be some marks of maturity, spiritually speaking. There ought to be some sign that you are growing spiritually. Now, I know I'm not going to have any amens right here, but I'm going to say it anyway. If you are on the same place this year as you were last year, you are experiencing a stunt in your growth. And something is wrong with you. Because you ought to have a level of growth. You ought to be growing spiritually. And you ought to be able to tell that you are growing. Pastor, well, how do I know that I am growing? I know I am growing because the stuff that made me mad then makes me laugh now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know I'm growing because the things that used to get on my nerves then really don't bother me now. The people that used to bother me, I couldn't stand them. But now I look them in the face and smile and say, I love you in Jesus' name. I know I'm growing, brother and sister, because, because you hurt me and I can still deal with you like you didn't do anything to me. Y'all don't hear me. Y'all don't hear me. Now, 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 conventional wisdom says that I shouldn't be fooling with your behind anymore. That's what conventional wisdom says. Huh? But because I'm growing spiritually, I can love you like it never happened. Do I have a witness here? And that's good news. That's good news. I'm growing because I can take stuff now that I couldn't take then. I'm growing because I can endure stuff now that I couldn't endure then. I'm growing because I can take a licking and keep on ticking. I'm growing. I'm growing because I can wait on God now like I couldn't wait on God before. But the real sign uh, that I'm growing is I can praise God before God even give it to me. I'm out of here, y'all. You see, when I was immature in my faith, when I was a neophyte, when I was babe in Christ, I couldn't praise God until God had performed what I asked him to perform. When I was a child, when I was a babe in Christ, I couldn't praise God until God turned the matter around. I couldn't praise God until God manifested the miracle. I had to see it before I could praise God. Uh, but, uh, I know I'm growing in my faith.
faith. Uh, because I don't have to see it to praise God. The moment he says it, I go ahead and give him praise. I don't have to see the miracle, but the moment the Lord tells me that the miracle is on the way, Yes, Lord, the moment God tells me that my deliverance is on the way, I go ahead and start praising the Lord. That's the moment I can start shouting and giving him praise. Oh, Lord, that's the moment I can start praising God. Have I got a witness here? And I'm talking to somebody today who owe God a praise right about there because you know you're growing in faith. You've learned how to wait on God. You've learned how to praise God in season and out of season. In that right church, and because you have the kind of faith that exists without doubt in the matter, because you have the kind of faith that's expecting God to do more. Because you have the kind of faith that expands and developing into maturity. Not, Lord, Lord, when you talk to God, you don't tell God about your problems. But you tell your problems about your God. Have I got a witness here? Because you have the kind of faith yes Lord now you're speaking stuff out of existence did you hear what I said oftentimes in church we speak things into existence in that right church things that we don't have we talk it into existence but I'm at the point in my life I'm speaking stuff out of existence I have too many things in my life so I told the Lord I'm learning how to speak it out of existence depression has got to go up low self-esteem has got to go up being broke up has got to go up losing everything has got to go up is there anybody here that has some things in your life that has to go if I'm talking to you look at your neighbor and tell them neighbor I'm speaking something out of existence. I speak divorce out of somebody's life. I speak bad grades with somebody's children out of your house. I speak a spirit of heaviness out of somebody's house. I speak it out of somebody's house up i can see uh, brothers and sisters uh, in the spirit realm uh, things uh, are starting to move did you hear what i said uh, i said i can see uh, in the spirit realm uh, things uh, are starting to move uh, it's a moving uh, right now um, have i got a witness here uh, look at your neighbor uh, and tell them neighbor uh, it's moving uh, right now um, tell them it's moving uh, right now uh, it's moving right now uh, every stronghold uh, is moving uh, every wall uh, is coming down uh, mountains uh, are coming down uh, issues uh, are coming down uh, but don't wait until it all comes down uh, shout right now I said shout right now shout right now I need a ride or die kind of praiser I need someone that can jump up and raise your voice and tell God I'm shouting because I believe with the kind of faith it has to move if you know that you know that you know that you know 
it has to move up praise him right now praise him right now praise him until he gets the hell out of your house praise him until the hell get out of your children praise him until the hell get out of your marriage praise him until the devil goes back to hell it's moving give him some praise oh give him praise oh give him praise and if you're here today and you have some stuff that's in your life that has to move i want to pray for you whomever you are today some husband come on down here to the front as quick as you can if you have some issues come on down here to the front don't be ashamed don't be embarrassed i don't know what it is come on down here to the front come on down here to the front it's been there too long it's been there too long it's getting ready to move thank you lord thank you lord oh thank you lord it's getting ready to move it's getting ready to move but you got to wait you can't wait till the battle is over go ahead and shout now god is getting ready to move some stuff maybe some of you are familiar listen to me some of you are familiar with that television show hoarders huh some of you are familiar with that people that don't do not want to get rid of stuff can't get rid of stuff it's people that just keep stuff stuff that they don't need I'm talking to somebody Stuff that they don't want, but they can't get rid of it. They just keep on keeping it in their house. They are, they, they are hoarding stuff. Stuff from their childhood. Stuff from their adulthood. They are hoarding stuff piled on stuff. They can't even go in their house. They step over stuff, walking through stuff. Stuff just everywhere. They're called hoarders. But the devil is a lie. Every hoarder mentality must go. You need to start unpacking stuff. Cleaning up this temple. Did you hear what I said? Get rid of the past. Get rid of your hurt. Get rid of the dysfunction. It's got to move. Every abuse got to go up. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Whatever happened in the marriage, let it go. It's getting ready to move. Your marriage is going to get better. Your house is going to get better. Your career is going to get better. Your life is going to get better. Your house is going to get better. Your mind is going to get better. Your heart is going to get better. Better. But you have to have the kind of faith that God wants us to have. I want to pray with you. Somebody else wants to come. We don't want to do anything traditional. God moves, we move. If you want things move, this stuff to move out of your life, come down to this altar. Come down to this altar. If you want certain things in your life, out of your life, come down to this altar and believe God is getting ready to do it. I want you to raise your hands. I want you to raise your hands. Hands up. Raise your hands up. Raise your hands up. Raise your hands up. Get those hands up. Get those hands up. Get it on your mind. Whatever the stuff is. Whatever the stuff is that's in your life. Get it on your mind. Put it right there in your mind. And I want you to believe in your heart that God is getting ready to move it. Whatever it is, whatever it is, God is getting ready to move it. Let's pray, let's pray, let's pray, let's pray. Believe it, believe it, believe it, believe it. Lord, we are giving it to you. This career 
Glory to God. We are giving it to you. You said in your word that the latter will be greater. We're praying to God that our future, we're putting our future in your hands. We put it in the marriage. Put in the home. Put in our children. Put in our health. Put in our job. These young people that just graduated, those that were in college that just graduated, we're putting their lives, their school in your hands. We're giving it to you, God. We decree and declare it. It will be better. God, I pray in the name of Jesus that you increase our faith. God, give us the faith. Give us the faith that won't let us doubt you. We want the kind of faith that will exist without doubt. We, we, we don't want to we don't want to doubt you, God. We, we, don't want, we don't want to doubt you, God. We don't doubt the things that things are going to get better. We don't doubt that things will be better. We don't doubt that the things are going to turn around for our good. We don't doubt that the job is going to come through for us. We don't doubt that our children will be all right. We don't doubt that the marriage is going to get better. We don't doubt you, God. We believe with all of our heart. Then, oh God, help us to believe you for more. To believe you for more. As good as you've been to us in the past, we believe, dear God, you'll do better. As much as you have done for us in the past, we believe that more is in store glory to God God I pray now grow us up grow us up mature our faith grow us up Lord we don't want to be a baby we want to be grown in the faith we want to be grown God we that whatever we ask we know you're going to do it now God I pray for those hands that are raised right now in the name of Jesus I pray for these ladies at the altar I pray for these men I pray for these couples I pray for these children I pray for our student ministry that God you're going to enlarge our territory pray to God in the name of Jesus that you watch over them. I pray now for healing. Pray for restoration. I pray for forgiveness. I pray, oh God, that you would do what you need to do. I pray, Heavenly Father, that you would regulate minds. Do it, oh God. Do it, oh God. Do it, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Heal now. Deliver now. Set free now. Save now. We ask this in Jesus' name. God, those things that I fail to ask you, please, God, don't fail in granting it to us. Now, I want you to take those hands and give God the best praise you can in this house. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Give God the best praise. Don't pity pat God. Go ahead and give him some praise. Somebody here this morning, somebody here this morning needs a church home. I want to be your pastor. The person beside you wants to be your sister or brother in Christ. If you need a church home, you're in the right place at the right time. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. We believe in Lord, 
Whatever you're doing in this season, glory to God, don't do it without me. Don't do it without me. Lord, whatever you're doing in this season, please don't do it without me. Don't do it without me. Lord, if you're healing, healing in this season, please don't do it without me. No, 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 don't do it without me. Come on, help me sing it. Oh, Lord, Lord, whatever you're doing in the season, don't do it. No, 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 don't do it. One more time. Oh, Whatever you wish you'll tell us. Sing right there. Say, Lord, whatever it is. Jot those things down. And then we also know that Juneteenth is on its way. 
and we look forward to each and every one of you being a part of helping to celebrate and make that a wonderful occasion for the community. More information for how you can volunteer and support is coming. Now, just remember that on May the 31st, there will be no Bible study. Amen? The Women's Desperate for Jesus Conference is signed, the sign-up is available in the foyer. So we look forward to each and every one of our women, a part of our women's ministry, because if you're a woman, you're already a member. We look forward to you coming and celebrating with us. And if you have any questions, please see Sister Crystal McNeely. And if we have any of our visiting friends, if you're here for the first time, would you please stand for words of encouragement? Amen. Amen. At this time, we'll start on my left. If there's anything you'd like to share with us, please feel free to do so at this time. Amen.
sister in love. Amen. 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 For to all of our visiting friends on behalf of our pastor and our entire One Way family, we thank you for following the spirit that led you here to worship with us today. It was not by accident. All right? And so we pray that you have traveling grace back to your home. We pray that if you're looking for a church home, we hear a woman, we believe in the Bible. And you see, we have a pastor that believes in delivering the message that God has given to him. So we encourage you to, to come on and, and worship and join in with us. Amen? And so we know, I just got to say this one little thing. We know that as, as praises go up, the blessings come down. So we have praised and worshiped the Lord this morning. So I want each of you to look for your blessings to come. So as I close and leave you this, this morning, I want you to think about four words. And there's a commercial. This is my thought for today. There, there's a commercial that plays, and it's an iPhone commercial. I'm not an iPhone person, but it's an iPhone commercial. And there's a song that's played during this commercial. The song is written by Tadashi, and he is a Christian rap artist. So me drop you some knowledge look them up um and so the commercial is labeled get out my way when i saw that commercial play i said that spoke to my spirit i know it's an iphone commercial but there is a mother that is looking at her son run a race in the muddy rainy weather it's not anything olympic it's not anything big and special but to this mama her son is going for the gold at the olympics and she is not gonna allow anybody to get in her way of recording her baby and watching him all the way across to the finish line. So I encourage you this morning to our graduates, be it young or old, and I apologize I didn't get those going from kindergarten to first grade, from fifth grade to sixth grade, from eighth grade to ninth grade, but you are special to us as well. So I encourage all of our students, any age, all of our mothers, all of our fathers, all of our aunties, our uncles, our grandmothers, whoever you are listening and in here this morning, I encourage you these four words. Don't let anybody, it's not the four words yet, don't let anybody, don't let anybody stop you. Have the spirit of get out my way. Amen. That's sermon number two. We're going to ask all of those students that graduated from kindergarten to first grade, you stand. If you graduated from uh, fifth to sixth, going from elementary to junior high, you stand. If you graduate, okay, come on. And you graduated from uh, um, eighth, to high, yeah, eighth of high school, you stand. Come on, let's, now I want y'all to come on up here in the front because Pastor gonna want y'all to be recognized. We're going home. Let's give our babies a good God bless you. Come on. Right here, right here. Turn around, right here. Now, yeah, let, them, let her take a picture of them. Now, I didn't get in any of those pictures. I'm going to get in this one. All right, give the Lord a hand of praise for our babies. Come on, give a hand of praise for our babies. All right, y'all can go back to your seat. Amen. I pray that you receive what God had for you in the Word of God. Were you blessed by the Word on today? I want to say to you visitors, I heard you, I heard you, I heard what you said. I want to let you know you in the right place at the right time. There is no need for you to leave this church and not be a part of this family. We gladly accept you right now. You don't want to walk up here to the front, just wait for somebody at the back. We'll come back there and get you. 
You don't even have to come today. You can come tomorrow, but I wouldn't put off tomorrow what you can do today. Amen. You in the right place at the right time. Amen. Amen. We thank you so much for being here. Please pray for our world. Please remain safe. Pray for our sick. Mother Parker is back at home. Amen. Remember Mother Harrison as well. Shut in, bereaved. Please keep everyone in your prayers. Our prayer book, our altar book, please keep them in your prayers. And I'll see you Wednesday night for Bible study if the Lord says the same. Amen. I love you, and I am praying for you. Likewise, you do the same. Have a phenomenal week. Whatever you do, don't let the devil steal your joy. Please stand now as we worship God through the giving of our tithes and offering. I'm going to ask that all of you on this side and this side, you will exit out this door. You on this side and this side will exit through this door. My money. No, just up here. I want to ask you a question. How many of you trust God with your tithe and your offering? Now, can God trust you to trust him even with your tithe and your offering? Amen. Why do we give? How do we give? When do we give? Where do we give? To whom do we give? Together, give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, shall men give unto your bosom. For with the same measure that ye meet, with all it shall be measured to you again. Luke 6 and 38. Please repeat after me. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Romans 10, 17. God, we thank you and praise you and bless you for what our eyes have seen, our ears have heard, and our hearts have felt. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your spirit moving in this place. God, I pray that you would bless these tithe offering and step up that it be used for the ongoing of our kingdom work here at One Way Baptist Church. I pray that God that you would bless those, return it unto those that have trusted you with their tithe and their offering to God. I pray that you would increase the faith of those that God that have yet to trust you with their monies dear God I pray that you would allow us to have a great week I pray to God that you would keep us from hurt harm and danger God we just love you and we just praise you for being so good and so kind to us and God I pray that you would dismiss us from this place but never from your presence now receive this benediction may the Lord bless and keep you May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I want you to look at your neighbor and tell him, Be blessed, my brother. Be blessed, my sister. Be blessed wherever this life leads you. Tell them, let me encourage you. Follow the directions of our ushers. Follow the directions of our ushers, please. Life to you. Tell them, you can't depend on God. Seal through.
Tell him you can't depend on me. Pray for you. Look at me in the eye and tell him, I'm going to pray. Keep on praying. Pray. Keep on praying for you. Praying for you. You can depend on see you through. You can depend on me. Pray for you. Thank you for watching. For more information about the One Way Baptist Church, please visit our website at www.onewaybaptistchurch.com.